This is incredible. It looks bizarre. Magnificent. Shockingly bad. <laughs> it's incredible. This place is awesome. It's unlike any structure I think I've ever experienced. Wow. It is huge. It will give you an opinion. <laughs> Either like it, love it, thinks it's absolutely amazing, or you think it's the ugliest building ever built. I have brought you Habitat 67. You're welcome. Designed by architect Moshe Safdie for the Montreal World Expo in 1967. It grew out of my scholarship trip to study housing in North America just before doing my thesis. And in fact, it was my thesis that then became the project I built for the World's Fair. Hey friend, say friend, come on over. How'd you like to see wide open space? man-made site in the middle of the St. Lawrence River, an estimated 50 million will have visited the largest World Fair ever. People from around the world flock to Montreal to experience the future, or an imagined version of it. Will we all be living in places like Habitat, where precast concrete blocks appear to balance crazily, just to make sure everyone has a room with a view? This is the craziest apartment complex I've ever seen built in Minecraft. It's realistic. It works. Is it based on something real? The ugliest building I have ever seen. Not everyone loved Habitat. The project had its critics. I think everybody who's responsible for building buildings was worried about what I might do next. I was actually asked why I'm shooting this structure. Somebody said it's probably one of the ugliest structures that they've ever seen. It's very strange and unusual. Stretches like two or three city blocks. Habitat is located in a strip of land that was originally created as an icebreaker to protect the harbor of Montreal. The St. Lawrence River on one side, the old city and the old court, Mount Royal on the other. And you get the perfect wave. You Google perfect wave and you come to Habitat. What's another unfortunate perk? For living in Habitat 67. This view, of course, by far probably one of the ugliest things I've seen in my entire life. People like it because it's a constant way. So they come here to train. And beyond, you're seeing our wonderful Victoria Bridge, built in 1860. Why anyone would want to live in a place like this, you know, it baffles me. In the 60s, there was a general concern about how people are going to live in growing cities. Moshe Safdi in his student's project at McGill University developed a thesis on three-dimensional housing complex to provide each family, each unit, with outdoor space. Made up of 354 cubes, each around 600 square feet, a home could be comprised of multiple cubes. Concrete building units were prefabricated and stacked on site like Lego blocks. When Safdi worked on this idea, he started playing with Lego and modules and so on. You can see how the blocks are not just assembled like a pile of things, but they're arranged in a way to leave open vista. I wanted the habitat to look like a highly finished, sophisticated product, which is why I went to precasting. This is symmetrically correct place boxes. Everything lines up so nicely. Under there is where you have the kitchen. That other window is the dining room, and this other one is the uh, living room. It's so massive and so strange. It's actually pretty mind blowing. I still don't know. Have you ever seen anything this fascinating in the form of a housing development? People live up here. How would you describe it? Eyesore. Absolute eyesore. You're not a fan. No, I want to gouge my own eyes out. Leveling. Would Starting you live here? No, definitely not. No. Let's go and see how it is to actually live in one of the units in Habitat 67. See these little details with the, the window outside your front door just to give you another view? Hi, welcome to my home. Our favorite building is Habitat 67 and we both happen to live here. Dexter's been living here for 15 years and, and I've been here for 10. I've lived here for about 45 years. Frank's home is made up of five cubes, which totals just over 3,000 square feet. How many unit modules do you have? Uh, we have here three uh, modules, and the unusual part is you go from the top floor, the uh, living room, and then you go down to the uh, where we are now, to the dining room, the kitchen, and then on third, you do have the, uh, the master bedroom and a small uh, living room. This is my kitchen, and it's a full cube. It's a kitchen and a dining room together. The dining room is at the other end, and this is the solarium. I enjoy the scenery there because it gives me a view of the harbor, pine trees, the garden. The upstairs is made up of three additional cubes comprising the bedrooms, office, and den, with a spacious solarium attached to every room. It's just the ability to feel like you're inside and outside at the exact same time.
You get the sense that people living at Habitat 67 know they are participating in greatness. They are there by choice, and if they find life there limiting in any way, it must be worth it. This was actually used in the movie Blades of Glory, if you remember the Will Ferrell movie. Ce fut également le décor d'un clip de Leonard Cohen ou encore d'une séance photo de Céline Dion. Moïse Safdie was way ahead of his time. You know, he was thinking out of the box even though he created these beautiful boxes. Habitat 67 is truly a masterpiece of architectural innovation that presented Canada as a modern, sophisticated country to the world. Back in 2001, the International Council on Monuments and Sites noted that it's the only Canadian building featured in books about modern architecture. I'm actually really glad I got the chance to come out here and show you guys this. This place is awesome. And honestly, it kind of low-key became my favorite building in Montreal. So if you have a chance, please check it out. You gotta see it for yourself. Do you think this could be replicated? Should be replicated? Well, this selfishly, I say no, I don't want it. I want it to be unique, but uh, I just wish you know, it could be. The building is loved, is inhabited intensely, is cared for. So, I mean, the only question about habitat is not whether it's appreciated, it's can we replicate it? The reaction first was, this is wonderful, but we'll never be able to do it again. How could you do it in the marketplace? Well, today we're beginning to apply this on a big scale in Singapore and China in ways that we could not conceive of in the past. From the beginning, Habitat 67 has fascinated people. Today, it's still a marvel, an architectural wonder, but also a lesson for the future of cities, not just for the 60s, but for today. It's as fresh as ever. It's as relevant as ever. You know, after years of being semi-ignored, all of a sudden, the ideas of Habitat are all over the place. I often hear the word Zen. You know, when people come and visit, they say, this place is really Zen. Ah, it's just a great place. It's good for the soul. So please just see it. <laughs> I wish I could unsee it. Oh, it's still there. Make it go away. There we go. Ah, that's better.